Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me <coughs> for joining me in the second video. Welcome. I hope that you Ramadan is treating you well and uh, I pray that Allah accepts from all of us, inshallah. I mean now as I said this second video I'm gonna talk about the atom and the quark and the quantum string as in the Quran. Now does, so the first question is, does the Qur'an mention these? Yes, and how comes people over 1,400 years didn't you know, shout and say, look, you know, this quark and it's smaller than the atom, and there's this string and it's smaller than the quark? Because the words used for, for quark and string were, could easily have been, could easily and have been translated to mean something else like, Naqira, which is a quark, was translated as a speck in the kernel of the date. So the inside kernel of the date, a little speck on it, is how in significance they've translated the word Naqira. And Fatila, they just translated as string. Not even as much as a string. So Allah will not harm you even as much as a string. So if you look at, say, uh, the history of the atom, now the theory of an atom as an indivisible part of nature was put forward 400 years BC by Democritus and when the Quran was being revealed the word Dara was common knowledge and commonly used as the smallest thing there is so the Quran mentions Dara in a number of places so uh, if we look at where the Quran mentions Dara there are quite a number of places but in terms of the atom itself it was really only discovered or the evidence for the atom was only um, discovered in the late 1890s so it took 2000, over 2300 years from the theory that an atom exists until they found the proof now um, in terms of say the Quran, does the Quran mention, where does the Quran mention the Dara, the word Dara, which is the word Atom, and in what association? So, if we want to get more understanding of, you know, the Atom and anything to do with the Atom in terms of sizes and anything smaller or larger, we have to look at the Quran and do some analysis on it, some statistical and location analysis and association. So. The word Dara in the Quran is mentioned in, in a number of places. In Surah 4, verse 40, uh, Surah 10, verse 61, Surah 34, verse 3, Surah 34, verse 22, and Surah 99, verse 7 and 8. In, um, so, in what context was the Dara used? So, it was used in context with uh, harm or wrong that Allah will not harm you even to the extent of an atom. It was also used in the knowledge that Allah has knowledge of everything in the universe even something as small as an atom he has knowledge of it but <coughs> uh, the interesting thing is when Allah mentions knowledge, his knowledge in the universe and the atom he says even smaller than the atom which means uh, there is something smaller than matter. So it's, this is the indication that there is something smaller than matter. It's not just like, oh, we're just making up our quark means an atom. No, Allah in the Quran, te, uh, Surah 10, verse 61, and Surah 34, verse, uh, verse 3, Allah says uh, that nothing escapes his knowledge in the heavens or the earth, uh, not even something that's smaller than atom or smaller meaning there is something smaller than an atom. So, clear evidence, the Qur'an mentions there is something smaller than an atom. Now, in terms of an atom, so I said the association is with Allah's knowledge. Uh, Allah does not harm or wrong people, even to the extent of an atom. And 
in Surah 34 verse 22, Allah mentions the power of those other than Allah. They don't, uh, they, 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 they have no power, not even to the size of an atom. And then in the last Surah 99, Allah says, whoever does good even to the extent of an atom, will see the benefits and if they do harm even to the extent of an atom they will see they will see the uh, effects so that's where how the atom is mentioned in the Quran and the associated context the words so which gives us gives us an idea that when we analyze so when we look at say the the quark in terms of history of the quark it was only uh, the theory was only put forward in 1964 and four years later in 1968 they discovered that the quark exists and it took a few more years in the 70s and 80s when they discovered the different types of quarks the up quark, the down quark, the charm quark so it was a flurry of uh, um, discoveries in terms of the inside the nucleus, inside the proton neutron, uh, in terms of different types of quarks, and even the W and the Z were discovered uh, in the CERN uh, collider. So, uh, the CERN collider, what is a collider? A collider is where they, they make the protons, let's say, go around a long distance. In the case of the CERN collider, it's 27 kilometers in circumference. So, and it's, it has this sort of, um, around the circumference, they have these uh, magnets and uh, accelerators which accelerate the protons as they go around and around, and around. So they go faster and faster and faster until they reach a certain speed and then they collide them together, bang! And then they've got these fast um, machines which you know take pictures very very fast and then they look at say the traces of what happens when they smash the protons together and then they look at the patterns to see what's you know uh, what the patterns mean and from the patterns they can infer that this particular quark exists or this uh, w or z or any other subatomic particle so that's how they discovered the um, the quark and it was only in the late 60s and the 70s and 80s when they discovered these quarks now um, in terms of say the string, the string theory um, has been around for almost a hundred years and they're still looking for the string and I don't think that they will find evidence for it. They, they know theory says the quantum string exists but they will not be able to find it using the current colliders and they estimate that they need a collider which is a number of times larger than CERN possibly 10 times or 20 times larger which means it has to be something like 300 kilometers circum circumference at least to um, be able to uh, look at you know or discover the string but the problem is not just the size of the collider the problem is also to do with the fact that the string is at the size of the limits of what we can measure using the current technology so in other words if physics itself doesn't evolve to some to the next stage the string will still be just a theory and uh, you know probably be a theory for another 50 years or 500 years or a thousand years Allah knows um, but the Quran confirms that the string exists and how then do we analyze in terms of okay we we looked at the association of atom and the dhulm is one but when we look at the uh, quark in the Quran again the word dhulm is associated with the naqira and we look, if we look at the string again the quantum string each time it's mentioned it's mentioned only in association with dhulm so 449, 477 and 1771 all mention the word fatila string or I believe it's the quantum string 
and Dhun. So the word that's, that is associated with the atom and the quark and the string is Dhun. Allah does not harm or wrong you to the extent of an atom and then the extent of a quark and then the extent of, the extent of a string, quantum string. So from that, then what we uh, need to do is look at, say, um, where these associations are mentioned, in what order are they mentioned. So if you look at the atom and the word dol, uh, it's the last time it's mentioned in Surah 4, verse 40. And then the quark, the last time it's mentioned, if you go down in the Quran, is again Surah 4, verse 1 to 4. And the quantum string, the last time it's mentioned, if you go down the Quran, Fatila uh, and Dhul, is Surah 17, verse 71. So, in other words, the way they are mentioned is according to their size. So, first atom, then Taqira, quantum, and then the string, which is the quantum string. So. The Qur'an confirms that the smallest thing, uh, the smallest thing that we will discover will be the quantum string. As I said, you know, the evidence may not, we may not be able to prove it using experiments for the next 50, 500, 2000 years, Allah wa But the Qur'an confirms that is the case. Another interesting thing it points to is the name Naqira or for quark comes from Naqara, you know, like a bird pecks. So uh, that's something again which they had not got to yet. One day when we have sophisticated enough machines would we'll be able to find that the uh, quark inside the proton sort of uh, oscillates and behaves like a bird pecking. So again, that may happen in 50 years time or 500 years time or 2000 years. So these are two uh, confirmations and predictions of the Qur'an. The Qur'an confirms that's the case. So uh, I hope you've, in, you've enjoyed watching this video and as you can see in order to get this information one has to do analysis on uh, words associated with each other and clues that Allah gives us because you can't just say, well, there's something smaller. If Allah doesn't say there is something smaller than that, then what's the point? Allah clearly says so. And then by associating the words used with the atom, we find that the quark has to be smaller because of how it's mentioned in in uh, in, um, in in order. So atom and, and dolm is is first, is first, and then at and then quark and dolm is next, and string and dolm is, a, is is the smallest. So. The string will be the smallest thing we will ever be able to um, to prove, be able to discover. Uh, Allah knows when that will happen. Uh, thank you very much for joining, and inshallah, inshallah, my next video will be time in the Quran and the speed of the speed of light. Is it? How can we infer the speed of light from from the Quran? So until next time, inshallah. Thank you very much for joining and I'll see you soon inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.